Hello everyone, if you're new to the channel, welcome, and if you've been here before, welcome back. Today I'm going to give you a final review of the Nito D7. This is the robot vacuum from the American company Nito. It is their flagship model, and we're going to dive right in by talking about the design. Now first, I will tell you that I have had this robot vacuum in my home for about six weeks, and I've put it through several different tests, obstacle courts tests, pickup tests, Check out some of the links below to see some of my in-depth uh, pickup test reviews on this robot. I also have a vacuum playlist for some other reviews of other robot vacuums as well. So, talking about the design of this thing, it is unique because it is D-shaped. It means the whole front here is flat, as you can see. And on the back and the bottom, we see the top right here is the roller brush which runs the entire length of the front edge of the robot. This is supposed to give the advantage to be able to let the robot get close to the edges of your walls and also into the corners since all your corners are not round they are at a 90 degree angle and because this is D-shaped that means the roller brush can get uh, close to the front of the robot and because of that, it's supposed to have a better ability to pick up. The D7 and the D6 come with this uh, side spinning small brush right here that's supposed to even help it more get debris from the edges of your room. And most round robots, you will notice, have the brush roller brush right here between the wheels, uh, which makes it a challenge for getting stuff in the edges of the room. That's why a lot of them have the side spinning brushes up here. So this has both the side spinning brush and the longer brush bar. So we'll talk more about the brush in just a second. Uh, you see the two rubber wheels here uh, that are adjustable for different uh, surfaces so it can transition from floor to carpet. Uh, we also have uh, on the side over here we have a sensor so that it knows how close it is to the wall. Make sure you can see that right there. We also have sensors along the front edge here so that when it gets near stairs, it knows that and will not run down your stairs. You have to do make sure that you keep these sensors clean and it does notify you when you should clean them. So other things to talk about with this design, the uh, front of the robot here has a bumper. You can hear it clicking and when it bumps into things, these clicky things which are on each side of the robot tell it to back up and it has hit something and go the other direction. On the very top here we have the laser based navigation system, the LiDAR. This is what helps map your house, provide a map in the app and also subsequent runs allows it to go and vacuum just certain rooms of your house or certain areas and allows it to get back to its dock efficiently. This is key if you want an efficient robot vacuum in your house. I highly suggest getting a robot vacuum with either a camera-based or a laser-based navigation system. The advantage of the laser-based navigation system is it can see itself around your house. It can see around, excuse me, it can see around your house in the dark. The, the camera-based navigation systems, the challenge is, is that it cannot see unless the lights are on. So I don't know about you, but sometimes I like to vacuum at night when the lights are out, and I don't want to leave the lights on for my vacuum to be able to see its way around. So I like the laser-based navigation systems. Here on the front, we have one single button here. This is a multifunction button. Pressing this button will allow you to reboot it, turn it on, or allow it to go ahead and do a spot cleaning mode. Here in the top lid is the debris with, uh, container for uh, your dust bin, whatever you want to call it, along with the HEPA filter. The HEPA filter, this has uh, got a screen along the front of the filter, which is supposed to help allow you to just push the hair off and um, these are not washable. Nito does not recommend washing them. I have not washed this. I take my air compressor and blow it out every once in a while. Uh, it fits in fairly simply, and the, the dustbin is a pretty good size uh, compared to other robot vacuums. No complaints there at all, and uh, you have to take the filter out in order to empty the uh, dustbin, which is uh, maybe a, a plus or a minus. Uh, to me, it doesn't really matter because I clean the filter every time I empty the dustbin, so it doesn't bother me too much. But you do have to remove the filter in order to dump the dustbin. And the dustbin goes in pretty simply. Uh, looking inside of the robot vacuum, you can see here we uh, bring in uh, the debris from the front roller brush comes in through this hole right here. I don't know if you can see that or not and uh, gets sucked in and gets stuck in the, uh, the dustbin. 
and then the air ventilates out and comes out the back. So that's where it vents out of right there. So moving right along, let's put this back in. And it fits in really well. And I would tell you the construction of this feels really good. Uh, this reminds me of the older Hoover style vacuum cleaners. It's really a uh, good, sturdy feeling, American made piece of equipment here. The uh, wheels on the bottom, there's several here in the back. Uh, there's a few here on the uh, front of it. Uh, they are very sturdy, they don't make a lot of noise. Uh, so the construction, the overall construction, I'm very pleased with. Now, in order to remove the roller brush, all you have to do is pull up on this right here, this two little put your thumbs right here, pull up. The little spinning brush is held on magnetically. I, now that's probably a minus for me because this is magnetically held on. It can sometimes come off and it has come off a couple times in my house and I've had to go find it. So it makes it easy to change. You don't have a screw, but I actually prefer it to be screwed on. So once this cover for the roller brush comes off, you can simply just pull the roller brush right off. And the robot with the roller brush, I must have accidentally cut it on here, will actually alarm and let you know and continue to beep every time uh, you pull the roller brush out to remind you, hey, put the roller brush back inside of me. So you may hear some audible alerts here in just a few minutes. Uh, the roller brush, let's talk about that here for a second. Uh, so we've got a combination of these white clear uh, rubber uh, little slits right here and also your standard brush combination supposed to help with floors and carpets. Uh, the ends are not removable. You don't really need to remove this end. There's not much of an end there. This end spins and you are not able to remove it. Uh, as far as hair pickup, it's not the best. It does tend to get hair tangled. They do give you one of these little multi-tools which has a razor blade, allows you to run it along the roller brush like so, so you can get cut the hair off of the roller brush. I have three cats in my house and two girls, so hair is a thing, and so if you're concerned about that, it's not horrible, it does a pretty good job of not getting tangled, but uh, it is not the best. I have seen some do better. So putting this back together real quick is fairly simple. It just takes a second to put it back in and put the cover back on and the magnetic brush and that is it that is all you have to do to put that back on so i'm going to cut this off the multifunction button to cut it off you hold it down for 15 seconds and it will cut it off you can also do that to reboot it if you want to reboot it hold it down for 15 seconds and then push the button again to turn it back on and it will power back up it's an easy way to reboot the machine so let's talk about pickup performance real quick uh, i have tile floor and i have carpet in my house i'd say medium pile carpet i have rugs uh, as far as the tile i'd say it does a really good job of picking up debris uh, and dirt grime hair off of the tile Carpet, it equally does good. It has uh, 19 CFM of power here on the E7, and that is pretty mm, pretty good compared to other uh, robots around this price range. This uh, retails for $829. You can get it on sale oftentimes, but for, for, for that price, you expect uh, high power, and this one does have a, a high pickup power. So uh, carpet and floors, I, I, I give it a solid good grade on, on both of those. It did excellent. Uh, let's talk about navigation real quick. Now to me, this robot feels like this technology for navigation is about three or four years old, uh, which is probably accurate. I don't know that they've refreshed this line uh, anytime recently. I know they have the D3 and the D5, which is the previous line, but this really isn't too much different from that. So uh, talking about navigation, it, um, it doesn't seem extremely efficient to me, uh, and I'll get into some examples of that here in, in a minute. Uh, first off, when it maps the house, the first run it does when it goes around your house to map it, it's learning your home, so it's creating a map in the app. And that takes, it took about, I have about 1,500 square foot house, and it took a little over 100 minutes to map my entire house. Now once it maps it the first time, it cannot update the map. You can delete the map and start all over again, 
but it cannot update it every time it runs, which is a disadvantage, I'd say. Um, so what I found is that it did a good job mapping my house. However, when anything large moved, like we moved the couches in my house and it, it made it go nuts. It couldn't find its way back to the base. So as long as things in your house for the most part stay the same and I'm not talking about like moving small boxes or shoes or anything like that but you start moving furniture around and a couple times I noticed this robot vacuum struggled uh, and we get confused and couldn't find its way back to the base for anything and I'd have to pick it up put it back on its base and reboot it so navigation feels like they could do some work with the navigation ability of this um, there are areas in my house for some reason uh, including in my front foyer that it will not get within about three or four inches of my front door and I have no clue why and I've tried redoing the map a couple of times and it won't get it same thing in my dining room there are areas that it just will not get up against the uh, the edge of the wall also when it's going around corners because of the D shape when it goes around a corner it has to swing wide and when it swings wide, it will back up and come right back into the wall as it's going around the corner. But it does miss a strip of the floor about that wide and about that long every single time. So improvements for navigation. Let's talk about the app real quick. So these are controlled uh, by the app primarily. Uh, you can put it down in your house and push the spot clean button. It will spot clean the area for you. But let's talk about the app because that's why you're interested in this thing. Uh, I think the Neato app is a really good app. Uh, do I think it's perfect? No. So we'll get into some of the pros and cons about the app. The pros are is, is that if you have the D7, it allows you to do room cleaning functions. If you have anything other than the D7, you cannot do room cleaning functions. Let me repeat that. Unless you have the D7, you cannot do room cleans. What does that mean? It means that when you go to clean, you can only clean your entire house or you can do spot cleaning, which means picking this robot up off of the base, taking it somewhere in your house, setting it down, and allowing it to do a spot clean, which is, I think it's either a four by four uh, square area or a 13 by 13 square area. Maybe you're wrong about that, but it's pretty close. You get a couple of different options, and once it's done, you gotta pick it back up and put it back on its base. It will not go back home because of that. So uh, that's not ideal, obviously. So that's the reason why I was actually one of the reasons why I picked up the D7 because I wanted the ability to clean uh, just certain rooms and that is really the way I've used it a lot. My my um, my living room, my kitchen, my dining room receive heavy traffic so I clean them nightly but some of the bedrooms, especially the spare bedrooms, I don't clean those but sometimes once a week. Bathrooms maybe once or twice a week. So the ability to clean the rooms, I would like to see that Neato uh, gives the room cleaning ability to at least the uh, D6 and even really the D4. It cost $400 for the D4. I'd like to see that option available uh, by Neato on the, of the, the entire line. This does have the option for no-go zones and no-go lines. So what are no-go zones and no-go lines? Uh, in the app, you can actually draw a line or across, say you have an area where there are a bunch of cords and you know this thing will get tangled up in cords or you just don't want it to even try to get tangled up. So you can mark off the area in a no-go line and so that the robot will not go there because it has laser-based navigation and because it maps your house, it knows where everything is. So uh, it did a really good job of obeying the no-go lines that I put down. I have several of them in my house. Now that option is available on the entire line from Neato. So that's kudos to them for that. Uh, that is an excellent addition in the app and one that's very necessary. Some of the competition still uses like physical devices or magnets that you put down to keep the, uh, the robot from going into certain areas and the no-go lines in the app is exceptional and uh, it worked really well when I was doing my testing here. Uh, other things about the app, let's see. Uh, when it gets finished running, it will let you know in, in the app and it will show you a map of where it cleaned. Now that's great. I would like to see the ability of live updates as it's cleaning. You can actually watch, you could actually watch it in the app to see where it's going and where it's gone. Unfortunately, they don't have that. Only when it's finished cleaning and it's gone back to the dock, can you see where it's cleaning and it kind of shades in the area uh, on, on the map on your, the floor plan of your house. So a um, little good and bad there. At least it does show you at the end how long it took to clean, how many square feet it cleaned. 
uh, how much battery power it actually took to clean that as well. You get two options for cleaning power. You get uh, a turbo mode, which is highest power at 19 CFM, and you get eco. Now eco does quiet it down a little bit, so if at nighttime the kids are sleeping, uh, you want it a little bit quieter, you want to put an eco. Uh, so, so it's great, two cleaning modes. There is a drawback to that though. Once you go ahead and start the robot off cleaning, you're not able to adjust the speed or the sound of the robot. And that's a disadvantage because sometimes when I go send it out, I go, oh, it's in turbo mode. I want to turn it down because I want it to be quiet. The only way for me to do that is for me to stop it, send it all the way back to the dock, switch modes to eco, and then send it right back out. So I would like to see the ability for Neato to allow you to switch the uh, between eco and turbo mode on the fly. That would be very helpful. Um, the other thing with the D7 is multi-floor use, and this is unique to the D7 and only a few other vacuum robots right now. So if you have a multi-story home, I do not, but if you have a multi-story home, this may be the robot vacuum for you because it can learn D7 now, only the D7, allows you to use multiple floors. So if you have a two or three story home, uh, you would have to take this up and down the stairs. And they do highly suggest you take a charging dock and put it on each floor of your house. So buy an extra 30 or $40 charging dock and put it on each floor. That way when it's done, it can go back and charge on each floor. So if you have a multi-floor home and you want to use a robot vacuum in only one, not multiple, this might be the one for you. So. Kudos to them for uh, having multi-floor support on the Neato D7. Uh, what else with the app? Um, so overall, I think the design of the app is, is pretty good. Uh, it's not as intuitive as I would like it to be. It's not really confusing uh, per se, but it does take a bit of getting used to going back and forth between different options uh, and going back and forth between menus. So. Uh, overall, the app is, is, is pretty good. I'd, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give the app a 7 with some room to improve. Uh, the, the feature set of this robot vacuum is, is, is up there with the top of the line uh, vacuums. There are only just a few things that I'd like to see them change, some of which I have already mentioned. And the price being at $800, uh, for them to stay up with the competition, they really need to start adding some of these features uh, and, and also updating this top of the line robot with ability to have better navigation and some more of the app features too. Um, final thoughts on this. So uh, would I keep this in my house? Well, let's talk about some pros and cons. First pro, multi-floor. If you have multiple floors, this is the robot vacuum for you. I can highly recommend it for multiple floors. Uh, the large brush design along the front is industry leading. This large brush, uh, while it does not totally resist tangles, uh, it is large, it is close to the edge of the front of the robot, so it does make it easier to get uh, close to the edges of your walls and the corners. Uh, it is made in America. If you're somebody who likes to buy in America, made in America, this guy right here is made in America, 100%. Uh, the app is good. That's another good pro. I do like, I did enjoy using the app. Could use a couple of update, updates. Large dust bin. Uh, the dust bin is a fairly good size. I didn't find myself having to empty it more than maybe twice a week in my 1500 square foot house. Uh, powerful function, uh, say near lead industry at CF, 19 CFM of power. Uh, of some of the online websites and YouTube vacuum war sites I uh, have tested this at 19 CFM of power. Uh, long lasting battery, so the, the battery times vary all the way from 70 some odd minutes at the D4 all the way up to 120 minutes on this. And of course those are measured in eco mode, the lower suction output. Uh, I was able to get this thing to clean my entire house on one battery. And that doesn't really matter on these smart robots because if it were to get down to about 30% battery life, it will go back and charge the dock if it has not finished cleaning your house, once it charges up enough, it will go back out and finish your house and come back to fully charge. So no big deal with the battery runtime. You could really use the D4, D6, or D7. I do like having the better battery capacity because that means bigger battery, that means it's gonna last longer too. So uh, I highly recommend the D7 for the bigger battery. Now let's talk about cons. Now, no option to modify the map every time you make a run. So what do I mean by that? When you set this out the first time, it maps your house. 
and only then does it map your house. So let's say you have a room closed off. Well, from there on, it will not recognize that room. So the first time you run it, it's important that you open all your rooms, even if it's a room that you wouldn't vacuum but once every three months. You need to open up all your rooms, you need to pick up everything and let this do a full map, because only the first time does it do a full map of, his house, of their house. Other robot vacuums, every time they go out, they modify the map, so they see a new area, it can modify that and add it. There's no ability to modify the wrap map for each run. <clears throat> I had this miss areas. I think it does um, a fairly good job at navigating, but there are some areas in my house that it just totally missed, and I felt it was a bit unacceptable for a robot vacuum of this price. Another con is it's expensive. At $800, robot vacuums now are coming down in price to make them more affordable and in competition with uh, vacuums like Dyson and uh, the likes, your good handheld uh, push around vacuums. Now these don't totally replace those, but at $800, this uh, is kind of more of a novelty item. It does a good job, but it's pretty expensive for something that uh, you still need to every once in a while run behind with, with a full size vacuum. The side brush design to me is a con. Now this is only on the D6 and D7. The side brush design, the fact that it comes off and is removable, I don't like. This has come off a few times in my house and I've seen others complain about that. Uh, it is also small and has a tendency to get hair tangled up around it. Uh, it doesn't seem very effective and on carpet, the belt design of it slips. So this is uh, powered not by direct gear, it's powered by a little rubber belt. Uh, the first one of these I ordered, uh, the first run, the belt slipped off and the side brush wouldn't spin anymore, so I sent it back because of that. And uh, this one has not, this one has been fine, but on carpet, the belt allows it to slip uh, so that if it hits something, it won't wear out the motor, but that in turn also wears out the belt because the belt's what's slipping. Also, if it's slipping on carpet, that means the belt, the, the side brush is not spinning on carpet very well. And, you really need it to spin to be able to get up against the walls and bring the debris in to the front big roller brush. So uh, I think they could use some improvements on the brush design. Um, navigation issues, I've talked about those. Uh, I wasn't very pleased with the navigation issues, especially when I moved furniture around in my house. Twice I had this problem where when I moved furniture around, it got lost and confused and I had to basically pick it up, put it back on its dock, reboot it, and I also had to make it rerun my entire house to learn a new map of my house. So those were things like uh, chairs, couches, a um, couple different times it had problems and got confused. One time it also went to go clean a room and a door got closed and it, it did stop and alarm me on the app to let me know that, hey, uh, the path is blocked, but it was not able to recover after that. It was not able to resume. It was not able to go back in that room after I opened the door and I had to stop it put it back on its dock and reboot it. So there are some navigation issues and I don't expect that from an $800 robot. So uh, lack of voice prompts. This thing does beep and you do get a use to the beeps, um, but a lot of the other competitions use voice prompts to let you know if they're stuck, if there's a problem, when it's finished, when it's starting, uh, what kind of room cleaning is it doing, zone cleaning or room cleaning, et cetera, et cetera. Um, no option to clean multiple rooms at, at once. This is a big one for me. Uh, I like to sit out and clean the back of my house at night when I'm sitting in my living room. And so I'll select all the rooms in the back of my house uh, on my other robot vacuum and let it vacuum up. And then at night when I go to bed at the other end of the house, I let it clean the other side of my house. This has the option to clean only one room at a time. So that means that it will clean my dining room, finish, go back to the dock. If I want it to clean the kitchen, I'll have to select the kitchen. It'll go back, clean the kitchen and go back to the dock. And if I want to select my living room, I'll have to do that over and over. You get the point. Uh, that is something that they could enable an app to allow you, especially on the D7, to select multiple rooms for it to clean at once. So that is a drawback and a con for me. Loud. This thing is not quiet. Even on equa mode, I found this thing kind of rattles and vibrates. I don't think it's a quality issue. Maybe it's because of the large suction, this large CFM on it, but it does tend to rattle, especially if it's going over rugs and transitions. It can be quite loud. Zone cleaning functions. 
There are no abilities on this to do a zone cleaning. You can do a room cleaning. The zone cleaning function is essentially this. Pick up the robot, take it somewhere in your house, drop it down, push the button for the zone cleaning. It will clean a small area, and then when it's finished, you have to pick it up and take it back. I would like to see the ability for you on the, on the app to maybe circle an area or box in an area on your, on your app to say, okay, go clean that area and maybe the option to clean it more than once, maybe two passes or three passes. I've seen that on some other competing robots that are less expensive than this. So no great functional zone cleaning option. I would also like to see some improvements with the no-go areas. Currently right now you can do no-go lines on your map. I would like to see the ability to do no-go boxes, which is maybe on my bed, I don't want it going under my bed, so I would just box in my entire bed. Instead, right now I have to do a line on each side of my bed to keep it from going under the bed. So there could be some improvements there. Overall, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the base design. Here is the base. And so these two, two bars right here are what it backs up to. Like I said, most of the time it found its base just, just perfectly fine. When it backs up to the base, it kind of does like a little wiggling motion and it backs up and makes contacts and, and gives you a little audible beep when it's done. Uh, it also sends you a notification app to let you know that it's uh, finished its cleaning. Overall, what are my thoughts on this robot vacuum? I think that this robot vacuum, they need to make some improvements. Technology uh, needs to be brought up to date. If they're going to ask the $800 premium that this robot costs, these things are a must for me. Uh, do I recommend this? Uh, yes, I, I do recommend it. If it's something that you want to buy and you, want, you, you, you care about made in America, this is a great robot for you. Uh, if you have multiple floors, this is a great robot for you. Um, if you have large transitions or large rugs in your house, or a thick pile carpet, this robot's for you. It has a great clearance and very rarely got stuck going over rugs. So very impressed by that. Uh, it may not be for you if you're a tech person and want some of the options or if you want multiple room cleaning options. Um, and if you are more concerned about it being able to clean every square inch of your house and not miss certain areas, um, like some of these things may be nitpicky for me. They were fairly important for now. That is all. I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. If you have some of these same experiences or if you have different experiences with the Neato robot vacuums, drop a comment below. Make sure you smash that like button if you like this content and be sure to subscribe and share. I appreciate your time. Take it easy, everyone.